If you're a Nintendo fan, or specifically a Nintendo Switch fan, there's a pretty good chance you've already been kind of hoping for Nintendo to upgrade on what the Nintendo Switch has been. A massively popular system with the hybrid mentality in mind where you can play in handheld and in dock mode, bringing all of your experiences that you can play at home on your TV with a typical traditional controller on the go pretty much on the same device. And it's been many years where people have had rumored leaks and information regarding the potential of a Nintendo Switch 2 system, many of which have kind of gone by the wayside because at the end of the day, Nintendo will do whatever it is that they want whenever they want to do it. However, for the first time, I think in a very long time, we actually have some tangible information. And I'm sure if you have been keeping your ears peeled uh, regarding all of the Nintendo Switch rumors as of recently, specifically around after Gamescom took place, you've kind of been noticing that there's more information starting to trickle out since essentially at Gamescom, Nintendo allegedly went ahead and showed behind closed doors some sort of system, maybe a dev kit, some type of developer unit, something along those lines, certainly not the final product because otherwise we would have more details than that, uh, but something along the lines of what they're planning to do with the system and ultimately whoever actually got to see uh, whatever this system was, they're starting to talk. Enough that a lot of outlets and respected outlets at that are starting to put their name behind it. Today we're going to be talking about a couple of those things, but specifically in this video, I want to talk about DLSS 3.5 because if this turns out to be true, and again, everything taken with a grain of salt, if it does turn out to be accurate, I think it's probably going to be the biggest game changer to most likely any Nintendo console going forward or any in the past that we have seen so far. Originally, we got an article from Eurogamer just yesterday as this video goes live from Tom Phillips. Now, Tom Phillips is a relatively well-known um, writer for uh, many outlets, but specifically for Eurogamer. And they, whenever they put their name behind something, you should probably listen because they seem to be knowing what they're talking about. Originally in their article, and I'm not going to go into too much of the details here, but at the end of the day, they talk about uh, that at Gamescom in the short floor, yes, there were many games to be seen like Super Mario. Mario uh, Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, Pikmin 4, uh, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, but behind closed door Nintendo was showing two select publishers, and this is very important because it's not just random people, but actual people who matter, the ones who are going to make the big investment decisions to put their games on this brand new system, Nintendo was showing them something along the lines of a potential brand new system, a Switch 2 demo, if you will, where they were able to see, according to their article, a, a brand new souped up or a more powerful version of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Remember, this is the original launch game for the original Nintendo Switch uh, with targeted specs. So essentially this game was running and looking more modern, more visually appealing than the stuff that we have been able to see already. A lot of players have already been able to play um, anything with modern version on a PC. Of course, the game can be moderable with things like Yuzu, for example. So you can run that game already almost natively at 4K and it looks incredible. But now that Nintendo's actually doing that with DLSS, at the very least on what this article mentions, it's starting to get more notoriety and certainly uh, more attention. At the same time, though, their article also mentions that yes, Nintendo has publicly yet to mention anything along the lines of a potential Switch 2, but of course, it's almost time up for that. We're expecting to see more information on that. Soon after that article went up from Eurogamer, VGC Video Games Chronicle put up their very own article that Nintendo showed the Switch 2 demo at Gamescom. And this article, I find it to be more interesting. This one was originally written by Andy Robinson, another well-known journalist. They have been wrong in the past as well. It's no different than any other journalist. They have made mistakes, but of course, they try to do the best thing that their best put for, their best foot forward usually. Uh, and they try to get uh, information as accurately as they can. And this article I find to be much more juicy because they get into more nitty gritty, specifically when they talk about the same thing. Yes, Nintendo showed off Breath of the Wild, a more powerful version with higher frame rates, higher resolutions, and stuff like that, targeting the brand new, more powerful console. That's not to be, a, that's not much of a surprise, but they also mentioned that a source told them that they got to see the Matrix Awakens Unreal 5 
tech demo. Now, if you guys remember when Unreal 5 was originally shown, there's a couple of games actually shipping now on Unreal 5. Um, I believe Remnant 2 just recently came out on that. PlayStation 5 runs at roughly about 400, 1400p or so, between 50 and 60 frames. So, you know, it's high tech stuff as games that are looking incredible, specifically on current gen consoles, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Series S may be less or so, uh, but a lot of those games are using DLSS to some degree. Maybe not 3.5, which we're going to get to in a minute. Uh, but originally, the Matrix Awakens Unreal 5 tech demo, which something easily should be able to see on YouTube. We're going to leave it. I'll link in the description below for that. Probably going to be running in the background if the, if, the, if they don't go ahead and uh, get claim and copyrighted. Uh, I'm going to try to run that in the background so you guys can see. That thing is top of the line technology. That's nothing to be sneezed at. This is If the Nintendo Switch 2 can actually run this with DLSS and specifically 3.5, that's going to be some really interesting thing at the same time though and this is where it gets really interesting the demo has was said to be running on nvidia dlss upscaling technology with advanced ray tracing enabled visuals comparable to the sony's and playstation current gen consoles the reason why this is interesting is because it basically confirms that as 3.5 it needs to have ray tracing in order to be able to, uh, to have that enabled or maybe 3.1 at the very least so if it's running dlss 3.5 you're looking at a game that can natively run internally on the system's very own whatever G gpu or specs that it currently has at 720p natively and it just upscales everything it doesn't have to be 4k it can still be 1080p or even 1400 uh, 1440p which is what you typically would expect to see on a docked system but a handheld it can run at 720p upscale to 1080p and it looks fantastic on the screen all of the whistles all of the bells and whistles you would typically expect with a modern game easily is going to look fantastic on a smaller screen but with dlss it'll look even better because it's running natively at a lower resolution the massive benefit though here is that if it's actually dlss 3.5 not 2.0 which we actually uh, got a little bit of a glimpse on and this is something that you mentioned in the article as well a few years back uh, when nintendo was kind of like already uh putting in for, um, like i believe a patent down to upscale from I believe it was 540p to 1080p. This was, I believe, in 2021 or something along those lines. Back then, a lot of people expected it to be DLSS 2.0. Essentially, what that was is, yes, yeah, you can run a 540p image to 1080p, but there's a lot of noise happening on the screen. If it's 3.5, you're getting ray tracing, you're getting modern gen features, and it comes with the Unreal 5 um, kind of like bells and whistles. A lot of the stuff that you've seen modern games that kind of take full advantage of, you're going to be able to get there. But not only that, you get FPS boost. So you're going to be able to get higher resolution images with better frame rates. It's almost like magic. A lot of people who actually have a 4090 video card will simply be able to tell you that a DLSS 3.5 at a current state, which of course is just going to get improvised upon and, and changed and tweaked into whatever 4.0 or 4.5 or whatever the next versions are going to be. Um, that thing already can make any game. Games like Baldur's Gate 3, for example, run extremely well. Yes, there's certain parts of the game that are still going to struggle, but visually that game is going to look fantastic because internally it's running at a lower resolution. You're visually looking at it at 1440p, maybe 1080p, or maybe 4K at 60 fps 50 fps whatever your uh, video card can actually hold only because of that dlss if we actually try to run the game natively it'll probably run at half the frame rate you're already running it on because it's just going to be struggling at that point 3.5 brings also a lot of technologies from the unreal engine 5 moniker which essentially unreal 5 has kind of become the main um default kind of like video game engine that a lot of developers kind of like tailor to we've actually even seen nintendo games begin to, to unreal engine uh, and be tailored by unreal engine as well so this is something that even nintendo themselves are starting to play with and it's going to be interesting to see if many of their games going forward are still going to be using in-house technologies with their own engines but a lot of massive developers we're talking about square enix we're talking about capcom 
We're talking about uh, Bandai Namco. We're talking about Koei Tecmo. We're talking about Bethesda. We're talking about many of these developers and publishers using Unreal Engine for massive, massive games. Some of the biggest games we've actually seen. And it's just being improvised upon. Everyone's using the same language, the same technology. And at the end of the day, that will be beneficial for whatever this next Nintendo Switch 2 might end up being. The biggest benefit could be tied alongside the rumors that we heard just about a week ago. Where, you know, someone who claims that they saw the Nintendo Switch 2 at Gamescom behind closed doors simply said that they saw the Final Fantasy 7 remake running at pretty much PlayStation 5 standards, you know. Yes, is most likely using the LSS running at whatever 720p resolution upscaled to what 1080p, 1440p, 4K, whatever that number ends up being, you know, is being helped by that brand new technology of 3.5 DLSS. And I think that's going to be the biggest changer. Yes, you get better visuals. Yes, you get better frame rates and you don't necessarily have to have you know, the most amount of power draw. Now, that's probably going to be the one of the biggest limiting factors technically when it comes to the system. What will the battery be like? Anyone who has a Steam Deck already knows the better the game looks, the more battery it draws, the less battery you have to play with because it's just being more powerful. Can Nintendo hit that sweet spot of like three to four hours, which would be amazing to get a, a game running at 1080p with DLSS 3.5 at 60 FPS for about three to four hours in handheld mode, we'll have to wait and see. Honestly, that's going to be really interesting to see. And then the second biggest proposition will obviously, of course, end up being price. This thing cannot possibly be $300. It cannot be $350. We're looking at a $400, $450, maybe even $500 device. And Nintendo's not really prone to do that. They understand keeping prices down helps sales. That is Part of why the Nintendo Switch was so appealing, yes, the, the factor, the hybrid system and all of that is, makes it appealing as well, but making sure that they hit a low price point is very important to them. They're not interested in selling you a $500 system with all the high-end tech if they cannot necessarily, you know, make them readily available to everyone. And that's also going to be another issue. In these current times, can Nintendo make enough systems to make them available on day one and keep store shelves stocked throughout presumably the next holiday season in 2024? That's going to be a massive thing because we just recently saw with PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Xbox Series X took about a year for ultimately to stabilize and you can easily now find a Series X pretty much in stores. You can now find a PlayStation 5 in stores, but it took about two years. So it it just became a little bit of a hard to get kind of item. You know, PlayStation is claiming that there's 40 million PlayStation 5s out there, but a lot of people were still struggling to get one just six months ago. You know, so it became one of those things where like, yes, they were selling, but also they were struggling to meet demand. And Nintendo is certainly going to be launching on their own. So therefore, people are not thinking or competing with each other, trying to buy uh, the PlayStation 5 or maybe even the PlayStation 5 Pro, if that's going to be a real thing, or Xbox Series X Pro or whatever. Um, Nintendo's going to have their own space and their own time. They're going to be able to sell a lot of systems, but price is going to be important, especially when it comes to this type of tech and, and, and certainly the stuff that they're talking about here. You see like the, the ROG, the Asus ROG, that thing is $600, $700. And yes, it's amazing. It's got amazing tech, but what the Switch 2 sounds like right now is probably going to be more powerful than that. And how can they keep that thing at $350, $400 when an Asus ROG launches right now at $600, $700. That's going to be such an interesting thing, an interesting tactic, especially when we know Nintendo doesn't like to lose money. Once again, interesting articles from originally um, Eurogamer who put up their article from Tom Phillips and then soon followed after VGC Video Games Chronicles from Andy Robinson, two well-known game journalists who I respect. Certainly, I think they're talking truth here, but of course, there's a lot more episodes coming with this stuff. This is not just going to be one leak. Presumably, the gates are going to open, and next week, we'll be talking about more rumors going forward. I usually don't like to follow rumors on this channel. That is not what this channel is about, but I find these to be believable enough that I actually wanted to talk about them and see where we go going forward. If you're brand new to my channel, though, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos go up. And as always, thank you so much for watching.